So the objective in this video is to use one's telescope to determine what a star is made of, or in other words, what chemical components are present in a star's atmosphere. So one of the key tools we use to make that determination is the RSpec spectroscopy program, which I'll put a link to below. So here we're looking at the operational screen of the RSpec program. And the first thing one sees on the left si hand side of the screen is the raw spectrum of a star that I recorded with a webcam diffraction grating and telescope. So notice the star itself right here, and also the visible light spectrum of the star right here. Now that spectrum shows the colors that were dispersed from the star's point of light. So to make the star's spectrum useful for determining what the star is made of, we have to transform the spectrum into a spectral energy distribution curve which shows the light intensities of each wavelength of light as you can see here. Now this function is performed by the RSpec program. So in this video one can see a live spectral energy distribution curve as displayed in RSpec. And you'll notice that the x-axis of the screen on which the curve is displayed is shown in units of pixels. But we need to transform the units of pixels into units of wavelength measured in angstroms. This process is known as calibration to form a calibrated spectral energy distribution curve. So the first thing we do to produce a calibrated spectral energy distribution curve for any star in the night sky is to record the spectrum of a type A0 or A1 star. And the reason we choose a type A0 or A1 star is because these stars are hot hydrogen burning stars having strong hydrogen absorption lines that are easily recognizable on an uncalibrated energy distribution curve, particularly at the hydrogen absorbing wavelength of 4861 angstroms. So if we can recognize the 4861 angstrom wavelength in an obvious manner as seen here, by simply looking at the raw spectral curve, then we can translate the pixel scale of that curve to the angstrom scale, since these two scales are related in a linear fashion. Now the live spectral energy distribution curve is jumping around here because the seeing conditions were less than ideal on the night I recorded the spectrum. So to make that curve more stable, one can average 50 frames of the video of the star by clicking on the Average 50 checkbox right here. And by doing that, one can see that the 4861 angstrom wavelength is more clearly shown at this point here. And it is at pixel point 775 along, as, along the x-axis. Uh, so for this spectrum, I chose the A1 star known as Alhina over here uh, and recorded its real-time spectrum over a period of a few seconds. Now by looking at the spectral energy distribution curve, you can see a very distinct drop in that curve indicating the hydrogen beta absorption line of 4861 angstroms right here. So we can see the value on the x-axis is 775 at the point that this drop occurs, uh, which as I said corresponds to 4861 angstroms. And we can also see the value on the x-axis is 227 pixels at the point corresponding to the zero angstrom wavelength of the star itself, right here. So we simply subtract 227 pixels from 775 pixels, which equals 548 pixels. And therefore, those 548 pixels correspond to the 4861 angstroms along the x-axis, where the arrow is moving now, between the, in this range. So that means that each angstrom covers a range of 8.9 pixels, which is the result of dividing 4861 angstroms by 548 pixels. Now the RSpec program does this calculation automatically, so that all we have to do is click on the Calibrate button here. 
and enter the pixel value of the zero angstrom wavelength, which as we said is 227. Uh, and also the pixel value of 775 for the 4861 angstrom wavelength. So we type in 4861 angstrom length and 775 pixel value. And then we click the apply button. And you'll notice that immediately the pixel scale has been transformed into the angstrom scale, which is what we sought to do. So now we have a calibrated spectral energy distribution curve. Now the useful thing about knowing the number of angstroms per pixel is that we can apply this calibration to any star regardless of its spectral type. So for example, if we open the video file for the spectrum of the star Betelgeuse, as we see here, there is no obvious spectral absorption line that we can use to calibrate the x-axis from pixels to angstroms. But since we know that there are 8.9 angstroms for every pixel on the x-axis, all we have to know is the pixel number corresponding to the zero angstrom point where the star is located. Then we can use RSpec's one-point calibration to calibrate the spectral energy curve. So we click, click on Calibrate and enter, click on Use One Point Alignment and enter the dispersion which is 8.87 which is roughly 8.9 uh, and then we, we check the value of the pixel for zero, the zero wavelength, which as we see is about 595. So we enter 595 here and apply. So now we see the pixels again have been transformed into angstroms without having known any particular hydrogen absorption line or any other absorption line in the Betelgeuse spectral, spectral energy curve.